The sun is beginning to set on the season opening event, the 53rd O'Reilly Auto Parts NHRA Winter Nationals, but not before we settle. Top alcohol funny car, which features John Lombardo out of the number nine hole, Jason Rupert out of the 11th spot. John Lombardo, of course, his dad, Little John, a pioneer in the early days of Nitro Funny Car. Big time move for Jason Rupert. He's been here before, and he comes up short again. John Lombardo wins the Winter Nationals for the first time ever, going fives across the board at 261 mile an hour. Watch that center oil car near side. Made the first move, had a big advantage on the reaction timer, but it shook, it rattled, he slowed to a 565, three times to the final, three times a bridesmaid for Jason Rupert, whose car was all over the place. John Lombardo danced around a little in the middle too, but he was able to hold on to it. And John Lombardo, a second generation racer, he knows the importance of winning here in Pomona and picking up a Winter Nationals trophy. And in just a moment, we will talk to the good to go Napa know how driver. John Lombardo, he's already grabbed his wall. He's got his mellow yellow. John, you said your crew had this car figured out. Your first Winter National victory. What does this mean to you? Uh, it means everything. And back to back from the World Finals to the Winter Nationals. I mean, Jeff and Tim and Russ and Mike and Dolph and everybody at home really had this Napa car rocking this weekend for Lucas Oil, Mountain View Chevrolet, CP Carrillo. Got all my family out here, Michelle, Ryan, Jordan, good friends. This is unbelievable Sunday at Pomona. I like it. Two victories here in a row. I think John might have a new favorite track. Hey, Snack guy, you got more? Think about this for Jim Whiteley. He's looking to win his 20th race, only his 57th event. That's stunning. His record over Chris Demke, 10 and 4 head to head. But in finals, they're evenly matched to a piece. And just how good has Jim Whiteley been his sixth consecutive final? Just how good is Norm Grimes, the crew chief? Remember back in the day when he led Rick Santos to five consecutive world championships? Norm Grimes now calls a shot. I talked to one of the guys on Chris Dempke's crew. They said it broke a rocker arm in low gear last time. The damage wasn't as severe as it may have looked. They did have to put a new motor in, however. Who's going to be chasing who early this year? We're about to find out. Reaction time to the Why Not car. And at the finish line, it is the Why Not car. 524, 273. It's sensational final by three hundredths of a second. Wow, Jim Whiteley picks this one off. There you go. As Jim Whiteley collects his wally, the hat goes on, Jim. You have now won 20 national events. You have the number one on your car. Can you think of a better way guys. to start a season? No, not at all. You know, hey, just because uh, I don't know about season before the end of the day. Thank you, thank They're you. They're all thank back you. from last year. Uh, we're doing some things, changing some things around. My son's going to run a pro mod here a little bit, hopefully some this year. And and uh, I'm blessed to have this group of people, Goodyear NGK, uh, Annie at home, you know, here running. Thank you all. It's been a great deal. For the first time since 1991, Daryl Alderman, a Dodge, is going to win today. And Roy, jo Roy Johnson horsepower is going to win today, too. That's the other thing we definitely know. Want to know how each driver got their way here? Well, for Vincent Nobile, it went through Matt Hartford, Shane Gray, and Greg Stanfield in that very close finish. Take a look at Jack Coffin's road to the final. Beat some uh, very good cars, and this is a very good matchup, evenly matched in horsepower. They both have Roy Johnson horsepower under the hood, and two very evenly matched drivers. Both guys that really know how to mow down that tree. It's been about 52 minutes just to kind of give you an idea how the NHRA is trying to practice these turnarounds again in preparations for live television in Houston. I understand Jack Coughlin's car is shut off. Off fire, they can't get the spin over. They're underneath there. I think they're trying to spin the flywheel to get the starter to engage. Should we be surprised? It's been that kind of day here to start the season. Crazy things have been happening everywhere. They had a start just to not engage the flywheel to turn the engine over. It's John Nobile, Vincent's father, talking to Mark Lau, the NHRA starter. Probably telling him, hey, let, let's let's give him just a second. I, I know that these guys would want to race. Saw Jim Yates over there as well from Allen Steen. And how about that? We hear Jack Coughlin's car roar to life. 
Tell them to hurry up. They got a juice fast enough to body panels over there. Jake Hoffman's got to get his composure, which I'm sure he'll have no problem doing, and focus on that tree and try to get the win. So without a burnout, Jake Coughlin is set to take on Vincent Nobile. Jake has won the Winter Nationals before. Vincent hasn't. Didn't look like he even had a chance to get the wheelie bar set. Could be interesting. Here's Jack Coughlin. Though. Oh, and Jed goes red by 14 down. And what a shame because check out the numbers. Uh oh. Jed Coughlin quicker at 657, but when he turned on the red light, it was all over. So Nick and Irene Mitzos. They're celebrating, as is John Nobile. I'm sure Vincent is in the car as well. You know, what a way for the team to start, but uh, my goodness, it was some uh, drama right there. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. Vincent looked like he lost fire out there, and then Jaggy here, he shut his off just waiting on Vincent, then his wasn't fire, so I don't know what happened there, but, you know, it turned out to be a good race, and... Uh, uh, this it's a dim light. It's a easy to red light. So, you know, Johnson Johnson had uh, two Mopar Emmys in the final. Started off a good year. Uh, I didn't do my job very well today, but we'll be back in Phoenix. All right, we'll see you next week to Gary Gerald. With Vincent Nobile standing by up here at the top end, I would think, in addition to being elated to kicking off a new season with a Wally, but the consistency of your performance in four rounds today, astounding. And I know that's something I believe you've really been targeting. Yeah, you know what? I owe it all to my team. We went testing over the winter. That was our goal, to make a more consistent race car, and we did it. Got to thank Mountain View Tire, Mountain View Performance, Napa Auto Parts, Babylon. You know what? We did it. We started off the year right. Now we just need to continue it. And the first time in your career, you're a points leader. That's it. Well, Jed Coughlin, you red lit in the final, but we saw all of the commotion at the start line. What does that do to your psyche? Actually, I was feeling pretty damn good, to be honest with you. I'd, I'd seen Vincent have trouble uh, out there after his burnouts. I shut my car off uh, to do uh, that sportsmanly like thing, right? And, uh, and then when, obviously, uh, they got his uh, started to come back, uh, for some reason, my starter wouldn't work. I was like, oh, my God. That's uh, not, not really the way you want to go, uh, you know, but... Uh, uh, fortunately, it came around. They they uh, fiddled around long enough over there, uh, which gave us time. Somehow it started. I'm really not sure why. It felt like the maybe the uh, solenoid was hot or something and just wasn't working. But a lot of commotion. Uh, you know, two J&J &J cars in the final. I'm really happy uh, for everyone with our uh, Jegs.com Mopar Dodge Avenger. Uh, we had a heck of a weekend, and it uh, looks like 13 uh, is going to be a banner year. I shut my car off to wait for you to back up. Oh. And then my starter wouldn't work. My car shut off again. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> so, hey, congratulations. Thanks. Talking to Ron Tobler, Ron Caps' crew chief, right before this round, he said they're not changing the tune-up from the semis. They were happy with how the car ran, but they saw some things in that run that they did not like in the right-hand lane, so they decided to move back to the left. Probably a smart move. Ron Cass looks to win his third Winter Nationals. Courtney Force looks to become the first female ever to win here in Funny Car. It's an interesting move to take the left hand lane. I mean, he went a 403 in the right hand lane, but the left has been the lane of choice. But I want to say one thing the safety spar in HR have done a fantastic job of track prep here at the Winter Nationals. It doesn't seem like there's a big difference in lane. There's probably some little undulations out there that certain uh, crew chiefs may or may not like. That's what's caused them to take the left, but there is absolutely nothing wrong with either lane. Do you think Courtney's rattled right now? Well, I mean, it is her sophomore year, and but, you know, I've watched her drive last year. I watched her get in some situations where I thought she would get rattled the next run, and she'd get right in and drive it right down the racetrack. So I, I'm going to bet that she isn't. And as a driver, I mean, once you get in there, you know, you strap up and you pull up there fast, and the engine starts, it's supposed to say, you know, you got up there on time, the engine starts, it shouldn't be a bother. You go up there and do your job. The last fall, she stopped Ron Cap's title hopes here in a great race in the semifinals but came up short of winning in her own backyard and now she's just a thousand feet away it's cap it's cool. oh, oh. 
Get off that center line. She gets the look at that run. Well, the last time of the weekend, 4.025, 317 mile an hour. That is a career best elapsed time and a Winter Nationals trophy for Courtney Force. Her father back at the start line can't quite believe it. There's a way to make a statement. Low ET of the meet in the final round. Look at that hug in that center. Even got that left tire completely out of the groove down there. And she hung on, didn't cross the center line. Would have been an automatic disqualification had she done it before the finish. And boy, the thing even stayed hooked all the way that far out of the groove. Take a look at this. Right hugging that lane, that center line with that left tire completely out of the groove and still runs a 402. So much drama, Courtney, going on before you got up there into the water box. What were your nerves like? Man, it was definitely nerve-wracking. Oh, my gosh. My guys were busting their butts trying to get this car ready for the final round. I mean, it was definitely tight. I didn't know if we were going to make it. I was getting ready in my pit area. It was definitely stressful, but when I pulled up there, I mean, my guys listen to Ace of Base. I saw the sign all weekend long, and they're blaring it as I'm pulling up there. And, uh, man, it calmed my nerves. I was ready to go. And uh, they have given me a pretty dang good race car all weekend long. I am so proud to be a part of this Traxxas Ford Mustang team. Ron Douglas, Dan Hood, you guys are amazing. Every single one of those guys on that team, they've given me a great car. But for Traxxas, Castro Ford, Auto Club, Brand Source, Mac Tools, I'm taking a win home at my home track. I'm so excited. I'm going to celebrate in the winter circle with my friends. Woo! Winter Nationals champion. Woo! A pretty dang good race car. That's the understatement of the event. And a point leader for Courtney Force. Hey, this is the 50th year Top Fuel's been campaigning for a championship, and we're going to settle it right now. The Sarge has only won two times in the last two years, both of those coming a year ago. Sean Langdon looking for his second career win. Oh, oh, 11 for Langdon. He was oh, ready to go, and Langdon takes oh, the distance. My. 372 won. Langdon gets his second win while stopping the Sarge. Low elapsed time of the weekend. A double 11. That might have been a bad job of red light, but you know it is. You can see the light a lot better when it's dusk like it is, but man, double, an 011, that's probably pushing a little bit too much. But how about that run on the racetrack? A 372 elapsed time. And along the way, resets his own track record en route to his second career win.